developing world. Hugh Evans is a co-founder and CEO of the Global Poverty Project, an advocacy organization. He says that the UK leaving the EU presents significant challenges and joins us now live from New York. It's good to have you with us. So look, we're seeing the impacts of, of this vote politically. Uh, there's a leadership vacuum in the UK with the Prime Minister stepping down. There are also questions about whether the UK will turn the corner here stronger or weaker from this vote. How does it all play out? Well, thank you, George, for having me this morning. You know, our view is that you know, David Cameron, Prime Minister of Britain, who has now announced his resignation, has long been a champion for international development. He's been one of the few leaders in Europe who's maintained 0.7% of gross national income in foreign aid and development assistance consistently. And he's actually always championed this personal brand of caring conservatism. And so our message is to whoever is the successor to David Cameron, the next Prime Minister of Britain, but also the next Secretary of State for International Development in the Cabinet reshuffle, that they should maintain a strong commitment to international development, a strong commitment to 0.7% of gross national income in foreign aid, but also a strong commitment to achieve the United Nations global goals for sustainable development that David Cameron was himself an enormous champion of. So is this a concern, when you look at broader strokes here, of a UK that is becoming more isolationist in thought is that the bigger concern here absolutely i mean for all of its imperfections you know a united europe has coincided with decades of relative peace and prosperity and there are those that are arguing firstly that that through this decision they get greater sovereignty from europe and the second outcome is often a lot of people are arguing that you know they have the opportunity to re regain jobs that have been taken by immigration i think that the world is increasingly interconnected and those of us who look beyond our borders are ultimately on the right side of history. If we try to maintain an isolationist approach, we're really setting up what is a false comfort zone that ultimately will not last. You know, the world is increasingly connected and the best way to embrace that is actually to promote sustainable development for those inside Britain, but also those in the rest of the world. There is enough capital in the world to alleviate poverty in Britain, but also to alleviate extreme poverty around the world. This is really a question of political leadership. And in David Cameron, we had someone who was committed to the international development agenda. He was one of the few political leaders who truly maintained 0.7% of gross national income. And our hope is that that will continue to be Britain's legacy, even though they've made the decision to leave the European Union. But when it comes to uh, direct contributions to the developing world, help our viewers around the world to understand exactly what the UK what its position is and what's in danger here? Well, for example, um, the UK government was one of the largest contributors to the Global Fund to fight HIV, AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis. Mm. The UK government was also one of the leading contributors to Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, one of the most effective, effective instruments to tackle uh, you know, early childhood uh, uh, issues of childhood mortality and ensuring that children survive beyond the age of five years old. The UK government was also one of the leading contributors to polio eradication worldwide. And the UK government has also been a great champion for girls' education, so ensuring that the 62 million girls worldwide who are currently out of school get an access to education. And so on all of these issues, Justine Greening, the Secretary of State for International Development in the British government, and Prime Minister David Cameron have been long-standing champions in international fora, but also domestically, they've been really encouraging this unique brand of caring conservatism. And interestingly, this was the same brand that, that George W. Bush sought to espouse here in the United States, in the fact that, you know, it was really George W. Bush who championed the first big investment into tackling HIV AIDS in Africa through uh, the PEPFAR program that was championed through USAID and the State Department. And so there are conservatives around the world who have said that, you know, the that a globalized community, that having people united, that we are ultimately, you know, much stronger when we are united as one world. And, uh, and this is really um, something that David Cameron took very passionately. So, you know, our, um, our, our message to the successor to David Cameron is that you cannot neglect these global issues. Britain has long been a champion for international development, and that must continue. And who that successor will be uh, still uh, the million dollar question, of course. Uh, Hugh Evans, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Coming you. off the Brexit will divide Britain from the EU, but it also divides the British from each other.